which came out on the 12th of November and increased uh, predictions on the capital expenditure for the Papua New Guinea project to $19 billion. So that's already been priced into the stock. I guess if we have a look at production, it has been quite a positive year for uh, Santos so far. Production up to the end of September was up 10% um, at 39 million barrels of equivalent. So that's going to take 2012 production to between 51 to 55 million barrels. We'll, of course, see that increase next year as new fields come online. So they're they are predicting 53 to 57 million barrels of equivalent next year. But really, this is a stock that you buy in for the next two to three years growth profile. We're not really going to see a huge kick up in production until the Papua New Guinea project comes online and then the Gladstone LNG project comes online. The Papua New Guinea LNG project is around about 70% complete at the moment and the Gladstone LNG project is about 40% at the moment. So they'll really start to kick into the production numbers in around, around about 2000. 2014, 2015, and that's really when the production profile of Santos will increase. So this is a stock that you buy in for future growth. The production at the moment still seeing some growth, but we'll really start to see that kick up in another two to three years' time. Another component of Santos is the shale gas story. It's one of the first movers in this area, and if we do see the shale gas story taking off, then Santos could see a real kick off, uh, kick kicker from uh, that shale gas story. But for the time being, we are seeing it uh, producing shale gas. It's one of the first movers in this area in Australia, so quite exciting. But altogether, this update, I guess, a little bit of a relief for the market, given that on the 12th of November we did see that increase to the capital expenditure for the Pap Papua New Guinea project. Carson, I think this is actually quite an important one for the Australian share market today. It's going to be the biggest IPO that we've seen in 2012 so far. I mean, other IPOs in this re uh, this year, uh, in terms of big ones, have been around the $75 million mark, and so that's the likes of Engineering Group, Calibre, as well as Armour, Armour Energy. So no doubt that a lot of companies are going to be watching to see how this one goes down, to see whether we do see some more IPOs coming to the market early 2013. This is a spin-off of Woolworths Property Portfolio. Portfolio. And yes, existing shareholders will get one share for every five that they currently own, but there will also be new capital being issued, 337 million shares. And so that works out to be a capital raising of about $500 million. And with the vote today, we could see the institutional component of this capital raising being launched as early as today. So it's probably going to be about a $300 million institutional raising and then a $200 million retail institutional raising they are looking at a five to twenty percent discount to net tangible assets so we'll be looking at that final price very closely as well and i guess it's quite exciting for Woolworths shareholders because if we have a look at the difference between how the consumer staples area and the property sector has performed this year well the property sector has been an outperformer it's been up by twenty two percent while the staples area while it's done well it has uh, lagged the performance of the property space with a gain of twelve percent but both areas have been quite good in terms of Woolworths, this will release about 700 to 800 million dollars worth of capital. That means they'll be able to pay down debt. Also, with the release of the property, this is going to increase some of the uh, performance metrics, like the return on equity, which we should see around that 20% level. But no doubt that this is going to be seen as a gauge and a test for perhaps some bigger IPOs to come to the market early 2013.